We have found a remarkable store we want to show you this morning, a store that's definitely one for the books, but well off the beaten path and down a country road. Bill Geist will point the way. Out here on County Road K in central Wisconsin, the Dickmans grow wheat, soybeans, and corn. But their biggest cash crop these days is books. One million books, they say. Later on Sunday morning, we'll visit one of the country's largest bookstores right down there someplace, believe it or not. Head now on Sunday morning, Bill Geist. They say there's one of the biggest bookstores in the country around here someplace. Is that possible? Here's one for the books. Folks driving miles off the beaten path to get to the books. Bill Geist explains. Out on County Road K in the middle of nowhere in central Wisconsin, Lloyd and Lenore Dickman grow wheat, soybeans, and corn. But their fastest growing crop is books. You'd never know it, but down this drive, Lloyd and Lenore have one of the biggest bookstores in America. I mean, are people shocked when they come in here and see all these books? They're just uh, completely overwhelmed. They don't know how many titles they actually have and don't care, really, but estimates range up to one million, which is way, way more than even the largest of the chain stores. How do you compare your bookshop to uh, Barnes & Noble? We have uh, uh, more titles, we feel. And you don't serve coffee? No coffee. You don't advertise? Don't advertise. You've got a terrible business location. <laughs> <laughs> How come you've never put a sign out on the road or anything? We want people that are interested in books, to, and they'll find us. Have you been here before? No, yeah. I haven't, but I heard about it from my sister-in-law, who was here a couple weeks ago from Iowa. So. Oh, oh, wonderful. What are your hours of operation? Every Saturday, uh, 9 to 5, and any time by chance, and any time by appointment. Their motto seems to be, you'll never find us, and we're rarely open. Can you make a living running a bookstore like this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> and you'll see the great Gatsby, mm -hmm. old pioneers, Huckleberry Finn. How many buildings out here on the farm have books in them? Well, the one we're sitting in is the book lodge, and next door is the book shop, and then that way, a book shed. I uh, bought this uh, for something else, but then Lenore thought she could needed it, oh so. God. This is the size of some libraries right here. Yeah. And then up closer to our house is another book shed. Boathouse. It's called the Boathouse, yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> I have the King Arthur House, which is a private collection of mine. And uh, he has a private collection in an 1800 schoolhouse. Now, there ain't too many in here. It's not too bad. There's room for more. Yeah. Well, then the old house. Oh, our old house. And then Chelsea House down the road. Where my mother used to live. We, <laughs> we have to get those empty. And then the back shed. Oh, yes. Big store. Oh, yes. And then the upper shed. <laughs> <laughs> the main bookstore in this sprawling complex is Castle Arkdale, a bookstore that Lloyd fashioned from a slurry tank where he stored tons of cow manure for fertilizer. Well, I was just floored when he said I could have the slurry store because I knew what was in there. Cow droppings to the top. Are you the queen of the castle? <laughs> I might be, I don't know. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Lloyd, on a hot August day, do you still get a whiff on occasion of <laughs> no. what it used to be? No, no. Now, if a big bookstore in a manure tank seems unlikely, well, the couple might seem a bit unlikely, too. Lenore, the college professor, and Lloyd, the farmer. She let me do the farm, and I let her do her teaching, you know, so mm -hmm. it worked out pretty good for us. They met in Milwaukee, and when Lloyd wanted to farm, she went along with him. Lloyd gets choked up just thinking about it. And uh, we went to the real attorney. Yeah. <laughs> We want to buy the farm. And when she wanted to get her PhD, he went along with her. He said, well, he said, I'll sell the cows and go with you. He did all the typing. He did all the cooking. And uh, 
it worked out real well and I made it. Lloyd went back to farming and when Lenore retired from teaching, she opened her bookshop. I've never seen a book I didn't like. And I read in the morning before I start my day and I read in the evening before I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. She displays most books conveniently face up, atop old quilts, and in her own eclectic categories far outside the Dewey Decimal System. These are literary critters. Oh, and uh, lots of Lassie books. Yes, yes. And here are books that banned are banned. Banned books. Yeah, That's they're banned for many reasons, whether it's a social wow. reason or a sexual reason or a moral reason. Yeah. Book titles that make her laugh. When will Jesus bring the pork chops? <laughs> <laughs> This, this table are the 100 best books of all time, according to one editor. And to me, this is the most crucial table of any table in here. If a child knows eight nursery rhymes, by the time the child is four years old, that child will be an excellent reader when he's eight years old. Is that right? Yes. Here's now, this is lives. interesting. You could cliff notes. Yeah. If you just had cliff notes on all these books, you could have a much smaller area. You'd have room <laughs> yes, for more. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. Although it might seem unnecessary at this point, Lloyd still goes hunting and gathering books. Is this the reason you got a big car? To yeah, hold... yeah, we can get a lot of books in there. How many can you get in the car? Uh, a total altogether is 1,500. <laughs> we loose pack them, though. 1,500? Yeah. I mean, some people would say you've got enough books. Well, you, you never have enough because there's always something in another book that you haven't read before. With Lloyd bringing in more books than they can sell, given their isolationist marketing plan, Lenore will be needing even more space. He's, he's going to give me one third of his tractor building. Oh, is this the one she's going to take over? Yeah, it's, it's one take third over. of it. Surely, in one of the million books around here, it must say something like, greater love hath no man than to give up his garage and clean out his manure tank for another or words to that effect.